Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. These deity pictures are not straight. Yes, they should be straight, is it not? Hmm? Can you correct that? Do we need an Anuvadika also? For those just like Bhaktiman's mother doesn't follow English. Surrender unto me. Only, you should do what I say. You should bow down to me. You should dedicate your life fully to me with no other thought. Everything you have, your family, your money, your property, your intelligence, your very life should be dedicated to me only. Everything you should do, everything you do should be for my pleasure only. I've said many things, I've given many instructions. This is my ultimate instruction. Who says that? Manmana bhava mad bhakto madhyaji mang namaskaru mame vaishasi satyang te pratijane priyosime sarvadharman paritaja mame kam sharanang raja ahang tong sarva paya pe bhyo moksha yashami ma chaha. Krishna says that. It's quite a demand. Surrender unto me only. Only Krishna can say that because only Krishna can say, Ahang tong sarva pape bhyo moksha yashami masucha. Of course, anyone can say it, but only Krishna can actually deliver the goods. Anyone can say, think of me. But thinking of others apart from Krishna will have a different result. Even if we think of demigods, we won't get the same result as worshipping Krishna. Krishna says this, this is at the end of Bhagavad Gita. Before this, he explains why we should think of him always, bow down to him, surrender to him, be his devotee, worship him. And he doesn't force it. Now we're having an initiation ceremony. Who is a guru? The guru is who tells us, surrender to Krishna only. He doesn't say surrender to me only. Surrender to Krishna only. Do what Krishna says. Bow down to Krishna. Dedicate your life fully to Krishna with no other thought. Dedicate everything you have, your money, your wealth, your property, pranaya, artha, dhyavacha. Everything we have, our words, our intelligence, everything should be done for Krishna's pleasure. Krishnarte akela cheshta. But practically speaking, the way Krishna made the system, the surrender to Krishna is done via the Guru. And in Krishna consciousness, this is the understanding. The, now we're having an initiation ceremony. There are various kinds of initiation, but Vaishnava initiation means dikha kale bhakta kare ata shamarpan. At the time of initiation, the devotee surrenders himself. He offers himself fully. Now, I just read less than half an hour ago from the commentary on Sri Valmiki Ramayana, given by, actually it's given by previous Vaishnava Acharyas, but Vidvan Goranga Prabhu also adds his notes. So I'll read from that. 
there are two persons involved in the process of surrender. The person who the person surrendering and the person who is being surrendered to. The latter, the person who is being surrendered to, is the object of surrender. For surrender to be fruitful, the object of surrender has to be both compassionate, compassionate upon the person who has surrendered and be sufficiently capable of fulfilling, fulfilling the desire of the person who has surrendered. So, for surrender to be fruitful, the person who is surrendered to has to actually be able to help the person who is taking shelter. And just came to my mind at this moment, I've mentioned that several times, once I was on a flight, I, somewhere between Bangladesh and Burma, or maybe Thailand, or in the rainy season. And sitting next to me was a man from Britain, and on the next seat after that, hit the man's wife. So, storm, and the plane was going up and down, turbulence, and the wife took hold of the man's hand and he put his hand on hers as if to give assurance, don't worry, I'm here. But there's nothing he can do if the plane crashes <laughs> to help her. He can't protect her. So that is an instance of taking shelter of an unworthy person. In the, in the matter of protecting one from the effects of a plane crash, the husband is ineffectual. <clears throat> Krishna can save us. But Krishna has made this system that you have to go through the guru. Surrender to the guru. Then how can the guru give Krishna. That's the idea, right? You ultimately, surrender is surrender to Krishna. We say surrender to Guru, but why do we say surrender to Guru? Ultimately, it's to Krishna. Then how, can, how is the Guru going to do that? How is the Guru going to help you? Because he is surrendered to his Guru. And then, how, do you, how is the previous Guru going to, what, what's his significance? Because he surrendered to his Guru. And it goes back all the way to Krishna. So this is parampara, one after the other, surrendering one after the other. So what are the practical implications? We can say, I am initiated. But there are some practical implications. At the very least, we vow to follow four regulated principles, and chant a minimum number of rounds. That much is in the initiation vow. Actually, the, the real essence of initiation is not following four regulated principles. It's not even chanting 16 rounds. Yesterday, I was talking about how we say different words, but we different people understand different things from those words. And I was just thinking that what about chanting Hare Krishna? But not everyone's chanting Hare Krishna is going to please Krishna. That's why we have the ten offenses are recited at the time of initiation. I, I just came to my mind in Bangladesh, there's one bogus sampradaya who the main thing they do is chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So how can that be bogus? Well, they have an idea, their, their guru, Ram Thakur. It's a Noakali, 
চট্টগ্রাম সে এলাকায় আপনার এলাকায় এলাকায় নাই শুনেছি রাম ঠাকুর বাংলাদেশে এক গুরু কত গুরু আছে বাংলাদেশে but their understanding is impersonal they 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 just like we have sambandha abhideya prayojan so sambandha with guru teaches all these things sambandha with krishna we are servants he is he is savior we are sevak he is to be served we are to serve and why is mayavad so so bad that's also stated in chaitanya charitamrita because it destroys the savior sevaka bhav the feeling of exchange between who is to be served and the servant so their idea their idea is yeah you know our idea our idea correct idea abhideya that which is indicated abhideya means that we perform devotional service to krishna krish anukulena krishna anushilanam in a manner that is pleasing to krishna and prayojana is what's prayojana what 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 are you getting initiated for what what's the ultimate aim hmm what's the term that that chaitanya mahaprabhu uses for prayojana prem prema krishna vishayaka prem to be precise prem love of which the subject is in it's in relation to krishna but their idea this ram thakur sampraday is kaivalya oneness so they chanting hari krishna but they don't get love of krishna so everything has to be made clear otherwise for chanting hari krishna there's no there's no need of initiation as i spoke recently i gave a talk on that i don't know if did you hear that that there's no need of initiation for chanting hari nam then why take initiation did any of you hear that that's published right yeah anyone anyone is listening to my talks <laughs> maybe they're listening but they forgot so it's good to remember also so we say four regulated principles in 16 rounds but the essence is this dikha kale bhakta kare ata samarpan that we our, our intention is there to surrender fully to krishna but there's so it's a lot more implied than four regulated principles in 16 rounds we say no meeting of meat fish or eggs but actually the it's also any food which is not offered to krishna and the food which is offered to krishna should be food that krishna wants to eat and what kind of food does krishna want to eat he wants to eat yomay bhaktya prayachati that is offered to him with bhakti upahritam that is offered with love by his devotee means cooked with love not that we get the uh, from the shop some bread and that pow what is that powada and you vada pow whatever it is and then you say well krishna must like that i like it so krishna must like it but we have to see what krishna likes that means actually it is allowed in bhakti that you can offer what you like in in the home <coughs> you can do that and what what do you offer to your family what but we that's why the temple standard of worship is higher because you have to see what krishna likes that is what does he want <coughs> we try and offer to krishna what he likes and that we have to learn 
So initiation means that if we're doing everything for Krishna's pleasure, then we don't sit down in the passageway so that others may come later and they can't get through. We have to be conscious. Before we can be Krishna conscious, we have to be conscious, right? If you're unconscious, then it's difficult to be Krishna conscious. So we should be conscious of all these things. Mataji can come. Sitting outside means what? You didn't want to disturb. All right, okay. In Iskon today, Mataji sitting outside means they shouldn't be anywhere near here. They can't say that at risk of being shot. No TV. Well, it's easy to follow no TV nowadays, right? Who cares about TV? You've got your phone, so everything's in the phone. It's Maya has more and more ways to seduce us away from Krishna. Anyway, we're not interested in Krishna. But Maya gives more and more ways. Everything, any kind of material enjoyment you can get on your smartphone or iPhone. That's the promise, but actually it's not like that. You can watch all kinds of things, but you don't enjoy. <laughs> There's no enjoyment. Actually, to be initiated, one should understand something which has got nothing intrinsically to do with Krishna consciousness. But it's very important to understand if we're going to be in Krishna consciousness. The one important thing to understand is that essential to understand is that there's no enjoyment in this material world. At least some theoretical understanding should be there. Because if we're thinking we can enjoy this world, then we'll try and enjoy it. Just like as a, a, a fly is attracted to the light. There's no good reason why the fly should be attracted to the light. But the fly is attracted to the fire and burns in the fire. That is the basis of spiritual life. It, actually, the real basis is attraction to Krishna. But in the beginning, there should be some disgust or, or, uh, with this material world. The idea of being happy here. No separate interest from Krishna. That's the idea. Initiation means I have no separate interest from Krishna. That is the aim. And I have to cultivate that. So I have to use my time, utilize my time for cultivating my pure consciousness in which I have no separate interest from Krishna. That's prem. We can define prem as feelings for Krishna, full feelings for Krishna. But that also means that we don't have a feeling for anything else. It's actually a very, very high standard. That is the minimum to enter the spiritual world. But in this material world, it seems like something very, very, very high. No separate interest other than what Krishna wants. We have rules. Our, our rules are considered very hard, is it not? We used to have the meetings here in that Sindhi ceremonial hall. And at the same time, below us, there'd be something, some Amma and then some Below us some Amma and above us some 
Baba and maybe above that some Dada and all this kind of thing. All kinds of satsangs going on. But Iskon is known and respected for that, that we have rules. We follow strictly. We're supposed to follow strictly. But if we see the traditional yogis and mayavadis, traditional mayavadis, I'm not talking about the babas and the papas and the dadas and all these, but the real mayavadis, they follow rules much more strictly. They're very austere. They're very strict. But we, although we're not as spiritually advanced in that sense, as they are, but in the real sense of spiritual advancement, we are simply by taking this principle, Krishnarte Akila Cheshta, everything for Krishna's pleasure, then we go zooming past the Mayavadis because it's very difficult for them. They become upset, actually. A few years ago, I was speaking with one Paka Mayavadi. I was staying at his ashram. Nice place, but I'll never go there again. <laughs> Very nice place on the bank of Narmada in Gujarat. Then I got to discussing with him. and. Then He vehemently said, when I said to him, well, you have to accept what Krishna says, Krishna is Bhagavan. Krishna is not Bhagavan. He's a, he's a, when I say Pakamayavadi means he's very learned in Shastra, Upanishads, Vedanta, all these things. And then I thought, why? Well, yeah, yeah. We have Bhagavad Gita, Shri Bhagavan Uvacha. Who is that? Well, the Brahma Kumaris say that's Lord Shiva. Very strange. <laughs> How Bhagavad Gita is spoken by Shiva. Chanchalang Himana Shiva, is it? No, it's, it's Krishna. So many names of Krishna there, Rishikesh, Madhusudana, Govinda, Madhava, so many other names of Krishna are there in Bhagavad Gita, and somehow it's Shiva. They're envious of Krishna. Therefore Krishna tells Arjuna, because you're not envious of me, I'm speaking to you. It's unusual in this world to have the attitude of non-envy toward Krishna. Those who are initiated, they're glorious because they're not envious of Krishna. But there's a long way to go. Initiation means it's a good start. There's a long way to go. Prema Rosha Shima, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, came to demonstrate the ultimate limit. There is no limit, but that word is used conventionally. The ultimate limit of Prema Ras, highest love of God, as demonstrated by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in the mood of Srimati Radharani. It's so high that Krishna himself doesn't know what it is. Now that's ridiculous. God knows everything. But he doesn't know what it means to love him as Radharani loves him. So he comes with her mood as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It's very high. 
Durlabha e Krishna Bhakta. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself teaches that even to be a devotee of Krishna is rare. Of course, that's in the Bhagavatam. Whatever Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says is completely based on Gita and Bhagavatam. <clears throat> Narayana Parayana. Sudurlabha. That's there in the Bhagavatam. Narayana Parasarve Nakut. No, that's another verse. Nakutasjana Bibhyati Swarga Pavaga Narakeshvapi Tulyarta Darshana. That's another verse. The, the devotee, due to being a devotee, he's not disturbed in any situation. He's not aspiring for going to heaven, nor is he disturbed if he has to go to hell. He's not attracted to being liberated, so-called liberated. What is that verse? Koti Shvapi Mahamune. What is that verse? A devotee of Narayan, even among crores and crores of munis, is very rare. Anyone know it? All right, send your children to Gurukul. I also forgot it. Then they can, then they can be good preachers. Preacher means you should know what is in Shastra and live it. So, Durlabha Krishna Bhakta, it is rare. You may say, well, there are so many devotees, there are so many devotees, but then we have to consider that Hare Krishna. This uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu talking about the rarity of devotees, he starts off by speaking, Eta Brahmanda Bhari Ananta Jivagan, Chaurasi Laka Yonite Koreye Brahma. There are unlimited jivas in 84 like species of life. And then he comes down. The, the, the Tarmade Manusha Jati Ati Alpata. Among them, humans are very few. If we consider all the mosquitoes in Dubai, in all these years, I saw one mosquito. There are also. So not many here, but in Navsari there are plenty. <laughs> I've just been staying in Navsari. And other places there are more. Some I was told in Siberia, it's Siberia is famous for cold and snow, but in the summer the, it's an ice tundra, so that all melts, and then you have millions of square kilometers of just water sitting there. And people, if they want to walk on the street, because they have towns there, then they're completely covered, and they have to fan themselves all the time, because there are clouds of mosquitoes. Sometimes you see, and you go into a room, zzzz, there's a cloud of mosquitoes. But it's everywhere. If you swat your hand, I don't do that quickly, then you could just kill so many mosquitoes. Thousands, millions, billions of mosquitoes. In our bodies, how many cells are there in the human body? What are any doctors here? They may not even know. So many living beings, but human is very small number. And then among of them, among humans, most are uncivilized. Srila Prabhupada, he considered the Western civilization. He had many things to say about it animal civilization, hog and dog civilization, less than animal civilization, rakshasa civilization, most foolish civilization, childish civilization. I made a, a list. It's coming in my book, <laughs> my, my next book. It's Srila Prabhupada's opinion of this 
modern civilization, which people think yeah, very, very high class, especially if you speak in a British accent, which I'm trying to imitate. They have in the announcements in the Dubai airport, in the high class British accent, which I'm again trying to imitate. In the and that's considered very high class to speak in a British accent. Please pass the salt that I can put on my beef. <laughs> it's not civilization. Somehow they managed to fool the whole world that they're civilized. Indians really believed it. They didn't recover yet. There's the... <laughs> We should know. We should read Srila Prabhupada's books and understand from him what is reality. You're going to have to tell me some more about reels. I never heard about reels before, fortunately for me. Reels and reality. Reality means to understand things as they are through the eye of Shastra. Shastra Chakshu. See through the eye of Shastra. See through the eye of Shastra means we don't see through the eye of the guru who says that he also Shastra again, he knows Shastra very well, but we don't see Shastra through his eyes, through his explanation. We have to, through Shastra means we have to hear through the proper channel, parampara. <clears throat> We should read and not read Srila Prabhupada's books as a formality. It's hard to do that because Srila Prabhupada writes in such a way that it really cuts through everything. It's, it's, Krishna is directly in Prabhupada's words. They cut through all the maya. But if we're very serious to avoid Krishna, then we can do so also. That's called Hinduism. It means the Vedic knowledge is there, but they're expert in various ways of avoiding Krishna. How to be Krishna conscious and not Krishna conscious at the same time. Srila Prabhupada said, every Indian is Krishna conscious. But at the same time, they can avoid. I, I could talk in another talk. Yesterday we saw, what was the name of that book? Written by some Amish or something. 25 million copies in print. Some made up story about, about Shiva and Nandi. Well, uh, the immortals of Behula. Mehula. So it's based on. Puranic story, and then you have the retellings of Ramayana in the modern way, in which Sita is a, she's fighting. That's that, they've that Patnayak, right? And so, so many rascal misrepresentations. I, the man was sitting next to me on the plane. I said, well, why do you read this? Why don't you read this? Why don't you read the real Ramayana Mahabharata? He said, oh, we do that also. Initiation means we have to be serious. Everyone in India is Krishna conscious. Okay, in some way or other, yes. It's hard not to be in some ways, because people's names are still like that. There are many people with the names of Krishna, Madhava, Govinda, still going on. Actually, all these names, even names like Ranjit, Suresh, which are common names, but actually they're names of Krishna, indirectly, not <clears throat> Sunil name of Krishna but you didn't know that when you were growing up did you? no what was your name? 
pavan. So that's from Vishnu Sahasranam. You didn't know that. <laughs> but the culture is there. We have to hear from the proper sources and we have to cultivate Krishna consciousness very seriously. Actually, initiation at our level, yes, we're aiming toward Brahmara Durlabha Prem. The Prem that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to give, Chaitanya Nityananda came to give, is rare even for Brahma to even think about. But it's to be cultivated very seriously. That's, for us, that's what initiation means. It doesn't mean we, we just jump into the highest level of Prem. We have to take it seriously. Hinduism means how to avoid, how to be Krishna conscious and avoid Krishna at the same time. <laughs> so many times I see, we meet people and they say, oh yes, it's gone very nice. And then you just preach a little bit how you should also chant Hare Krishna and become not a little bit less friendly. And then if you speak a little more, then they're not so friendly. <laughs> Our wicked mind makes so many excuses how to avoid Krishna. That's there in every religion. Every religion has some rules and some precepts. And what happens is everyone tries to find ways to adjust it, to make it more pleasing to the performer from his own perspective. One time I was doing door-to-door -door book distribution in Malaysia and one man invited me in. He wasn't, he was a Muslim and we, we don't usually go in Muslims' homes in Malaysia because there's, a, there's an unspoken understanding between actually I think it's a, yeah it's a law actually in Malaysia you're not allowed to preach among Muslims so we just avoid them and go to others but he he invited me into his house it's quite a good house and he was from some other country I can't remember maybe it was Turkey or I can't remember exactly and then I see I saw on, on the table in his room he sat me down and I saw a bottle of wine, and I said, you're a Muslim, right? He said, yeah, so how is it you're drinking wine? And he said, well, you see, the word in Arabic for the, the what's forbidden, what's the word? Sharab, you all know the word. Sharab, but that means a specific kind of alcoholic beverage that was produced at that time, and it doesn't mean this kind of wine here, so it's okay to drink it. <laughs> He's following the letter of the law, but not the spirit of the law. Or maybe he's drinking spirits also. That's a pretty poor joke, anyway. Now, coming to something which is actually very serious. Not for you, but I heard from two devotees in America, separately on different occasions, that there are many initiated devotees in America, means initiated in ISKCON, who regularly and besharam, without any compunction, smoke ganja. Oh, that shocked you a bit, right? It shocked me a bit too. It's hard to get shocked if you know so many things which are going on in America, but... And it's something like 
tum bi chup, hum bi chup. It's, it's, we don't discuss, we don't, we don't try and, and uh, justify it and say, actually, it's okay. But, well, it, it just goes on. And I don't know, it may be that one meets another and they, a friendliness they offer. Here, do you want a joint? Joint means a cigarette, you, you know, huh? No, you don't know, okay. <laughs> I, it may not be the, even the current term, it was the term when, <clears throat> before, <laughs> before I joined this <laughs> I didn't do it very often. Prabhupada saved me. Anyway, that, that thing, you, it looks like a cigarette, but it's got something else in it. So I was told by two different devotees that it's common among initiated devotees who they don't pretend to follow strictly, but they still identify themselves as devotees of Krishna. It's, it's widespread ganja smoking. They took the initiation vow, but they don't follow. That's not good. It's not good at all. I can, I can understand that you all understand that it's not good at all. I was also told, uh, twice I heard, maybe it was from the same devotee, that in France it's very common among initiated devotees who are not following very strictly to regularly drink wine. Because in France, it's absolutely part of the culture. People don't get drunk much in France. They take a glass of wine with their meal, just one glass. And from what we're told, it also it helps. It's an appetizer if you take it at the beginning and then it also helps to digest the food. Don't take it. <laughs> but they don't see, it says no, you, you vow no intoxication. Well, I take a glass of wine, especially if you take it with the meal. If you take it on an empty stomach, it's more likely to have an effect. But if you take it with a meal, you don't feel any intoxication, especially if you're habituated to it. If you're habituated to drink lots of wine, you can maybe drink a half bottle and still talk fairly normally. So, no intoxication. Okay, I'm drinking wine. I don't get intoxicated. And they think it's okay. But it's not okay. It's very bad. It's bad because, first thing we vowed not to do it, another thing that attachment to anything but serving Krishna is going to block our advancement. There used to be a controversy in ISKCON about whether we should drink, whether we should eat chocolate or not, but there's not any controversy anymore because chocolate won. <laughs> <laughs> And there are different quotes from Srila Prabhupada. The last quote, which Hari Shari Prabhu brings out the last time that Srila Prabhupada said, don't take it. And apparently Prabhupada did take it himself at some point, but then when he was informed it has this, this, this and that in it, he said, okay, don't take it. That's the last word. But then others bring up, well, actually that was misinformation. And if Prabhupada knew, he would have said something else. So what do we do? Ask Mother Yashoda or Radharani. Shukta Shakadi Bhaji Nalita Kushmanda Dali Dalna Dugda Tumbi. Chocolate? No. It's not in there. If in doubt, don't do it. That's all. We want to t we want we'll offer it to Krishna and then take it. What is the motivation? Because I want to eat chocolate. A question came up, should we, should we 
in Vrindavan, there are so many sweet shops, and it's all, everything in Vrindavan is transcendental. So, we can go to the sweet shops and buy sweets. And maybe you don't even need to offer them, because they're sold by Vrajavasis, right? Well, theoretically, you could do that. But then we have to consider, am I doing this for Krishna's pleasure? Or is it for my pleasure? Everything in Vrindavan is transcendental. Well, I guess the tea is transcendental in Vrindavan also. What about all those beautiful women in Vrindavan? Maybe you could enjoy them also. I'm told there's a slaughterhouse in Vrindavan. I was told that by uh, a man shortly before he was arrested. He got away with, he was a Gorakshak. <clears throat> he had practically stopped smuggling of cows in Punjab. He had a bodyguard with him all the time. <laughs> I went to see him, a bodyguard with a machine gun. And he had so many cases against him because to protect the cows, he had to sometimes kill the smugglers. So anyway, eventually, somehow, he's arrested and he's in prison now. Otherwise, he was... Anyway, it's a long story, but he told that in Vrindavan there's a slaughterhouse. I saw once going in rural Gujarat near the Maharashtra border, cows being driven on the country roads. I thought, well, what's going on? They must be, to yeah, and then I asked, and yes, just over the border in Maharashtra, there's a slaughterhouse. What does our Manya Subramanyam Swami say? Desi Gai, they should not be killed. The Indian breed cows. But then the, the foreign breed cows, you can kill as many as you like because they're not really cows. South Indian Brahmin. He said, then what, what about crossbreeds? Then what? But anyway, you don't kill any cows. You can say it's not a cow. It doesn't fully fit the description in Shastra of a cow. Anyway, our Srila Prabhupada, he recognized them as cows and he, he said that because the people are killing so many cows, therefore they're killing each other. What is the cause of the ongoing Hostilities in Ukraine, Russia has entered. What is the cause? You can look at the historical causes, the political and cultural undercurrents. One major cause is that the, both Russia and Ukraine are major animal slaughterers. It's a major part of both countries' economy. People don't see. You should see by understanding from Shastra. Even in Christianity, how did this come? This uh, They allow so much animal killing. But originally they had in... in uh, well, it, it said that Jesus was born in a, a family of Essenes, which was a cult in that time, who of at that time in Palestine, who were vegetarians and who believed in reincarnation, that they made Jesus into a meat eater by linguistic manipulation. That's another topic. Because they want to eat meat. Even in Islam, originally, they, they kill some animal, but that was supposed to be sacrificed because the Arabs, for them, the in the desert, the animal is a very it's a very precious thing. They didn't, but now they have mass 
animal factories. So was it was it meant that yeah, halal meat means you have someone standing in the slaughterhouse muttering something, blah blah blah, blah muttering something, and then one animal after another is killed by mechanical means. Any actually spiritually minded person would not want to encourage meat eating. And what to mention of mass slaughter of animals. Just we were discussing this as I was coming from the airport yesterday. I, I was saying that so much meat is consumed here. And, uh, and I was told, I, I, I guess it should have been obvious that they are whole ships full of goats. It must have been. I, di I didn't think about it, but it must be. You see in the pot, yeah. I had one very horrible experience once. Actually, I, in Bangladesh, I had many horrible, meaty experiences. Uh, I was just mentioning that also as we were coming on. The first time I was in Bangladesh on Bakrid. Anyway, I won't talk about that. I didn't, after that, I didn't go outside anymore because if you go outside on that day, you're just openly killing so many cows, illegally imported from India. But one time I was at Chittagong on the port and going to Sandeep, which is an island, and the, the, the ship came in because it's, uh, it's a sea crossing, and the sea can be very, so it's a, actually a, a ship. And we were wake, waiting on the dock to board and in the meantime, they have these uh, wicker baskets full of chickens, f completely packed with chickens. And they just throw it down from the ship on the dock. And then all the chickens, you can hear their bones must be broken and everything. They're, they're crawling out in pain and they just send one after another, they just send down. No feeling. At least initiation means you'll be saved from all that. Some of you, by your culture, you're saved from that. Jain culture, they don't eat meat at home. <laughs> Outside, no questions asked. I won't ask you. I'm not cast, casting any aspersions on you, but it's well known. The Jains are very strict at home. They won't even take potatoes because it's dug out of the earth, right? And you don't want to disturb all the poor worms. Of course, they don't have any problem with gold, which is also dug out of the earth, or diamonds. I want to speak of oil. They're driving a they, they're diamond business, Jane's, famous for. And then they drive their big cars around and it's, everything comes out of the ground. So what I'm talking about here is why I'm bringing up all these things. How we have so many excuses to twist everything and change everything. So initiation means... We have to be very serious and we have to be very sincere also to stick to the path. Even we may have difficulty following. Everyone has difficulty following. If, if anyone tells me that I don't have any difficulty following, then I don't believe you. Because Maya doesn't give us up. You see, we can't even switch our phone off even though we know. We're not supposed to have it on. If anyone is a Paramahamsa, please let us know. <laughs> Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati said this. If anyone's eligible for contemplating their Siddha Deya, just let us know. <laughs> he said it sarcastically. Sardonically, you could say. 
So it is a struggle. Shurasya dhara nishita duratya. The path is like negotiating a sharp razor. So we will have ups and downs. But stick to it. I was talking about ganja smoking in America and wine drinking in France. And I see among persons of Indian Hindu background, the ganja smoking and wine drinking I don't see among initiated devotees. But I, one thing I do see is attachment to demigod worship, even being initiated many years, attachment to some kind of guru who's not a proper Vaishnava guru, to some impersonal attachment to some impersonal so-called yoga initiated, but they also like to do something else as well. So these are all the kind of things that we have to kick out. Mame kam sharanam raja. Surrender unto me only. Bow down to me. Do whatever I say. Make me alone the goal of your life. Krishna says this. The Guru teaches this. The Guru helps us along the way. Hare Krishna. That's all I'm going to say at this point. Krishna willing, I'll say more at another time. Take this child before he steps in the Yagya area. All right. Vancha kalpa tarubhyascha kripa sindhubhya evacha patita anam pavane bhyo vaishnave bhyo namo namaha dante nitaya churnakam padaya nipatya kritva chaka kushatame tadaham ravimi hey sadava sakala eva vihaya durat gauranga chandra charane kurutana ragaha Parivada tu jano yata tata va nanu makaro navayang vichare yamaha Hari rasa madira madati mata bhuvi vilotama natama nirvishama Hari Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So we'll proceed with the taking of vows and giving of names and beads. <clears throat>